there's evidence of collusion and coordination there. It doesn't go beyond a reasonable doubt, but that doesn't mean that this is a good guy. I mean, we know the Russians helped him. He asked the Russians to help them. The campaign expected to benefit from it. What we don't know yet is why won't he show us his taxes? Why won't he show us his finances? And look, Ari, if this guy is able to be blackmailed by a porn star, how do we know he's not going to be blackmailed by Vladimir Putin? Well, that man wants to be the Democratic nominee. That's Democratic Congressman Eric Swalwell doubling down on claims that President Trump put Russia's interests ahead of the U.S. He also refusing to acknowledge that the Mueller report failed to establish any criminal conspiracy with Russia on behalf of any American. Former Utah Congressman Jason Chaffetz, Fox News contributor. Jason, good morning to you and welcome back here. Um, good morning. Eric Swalwell is not alone. No, but he's in the minority, and he may flail all he wants. You know, Swalwell has never let facts and evidence and, and witnesses ever get in the way of a good story that he wants to spiel, and now he's running for president. But, hey, somebody's got to come in dead last, and that's uh, what he's gunning for, and that's where he's at. <laughs> Here's what Newt Gingrich, here's how he characterized it earlier today with us in our program. You, you have so many Democrats running, and they're so desperate to make noise that they're just going to say a wide range of things that, that have no basis in fact, but gets them through the next interview. I'm, is there something to that? Yeah. No, I think he's absolutely right. It's surprising anybody interviews him because he gives the same answer no matter what it is. He's been doing it for two years, but there was a serious investigation. Uh, everything was in the clear for, for Donald Trump. Um, and I, at some point, somebody's going to say, why are we even asking this guy? Because he doesn't offer any witnesses or any evidence, nothing new. Uh, but he comes to a conclusion that really very, very few he, he uh, was come asked, to. Because uh, well, he's just not there. Uh, just watching that interview, he was asked several times to take it back, and, and he did not do that. Uh, you dealt with subpoenas all the time uh, in your old role as a congressman. Yeah. Uh, now you've got the issue with the White House. Here's Elijah Cummings' statement from the 24th of April. This is a massive, unprecedented, growing pattern of obstruction. President Trump declared to the entire country that he would obstruct Congress and order all White House officials to defy lawful subpoenas. Uh, the Trump administration went even further by expanding this policy to employees at federal agencies. Where does this go based on your experience through it? Well, look, when I was in the position of offering subpoenas, of which I did dozens of times to the Obama administration, uh, they took them as mere suggestions, didn't even acknowledge them. I can't name one subpoena that was fully uh, uh, complied with in the Obama administration. So. I have the greatest respect for Elijah Cummings, but this is a new phenomenon because Democrats for years during Obama never ever came to this conclusion. Uh, the president does enjoy executive privilege. You can't get the senior counsel or the general counsel to the president of the United States to come testify before the committee. That's ridiculous. I wouldn't have even asked. When I tried to get Ben Rhodes to come testify, he would answer questions in front of the media, but he wouldn't come testify about the Iranian payments. And the White House claimed executive privilege, and that was the end of it. So this flailing that they're doing, the over overreach, the power grab that they're trying to have, it's not going to fly because they've got to have a legislative purpose in order to justify these, these documents. And when they try to go after all of his tax returns and all of the president's financial in instruments, that's not a true legislative purpose, and they're going to lose that fight in the courts. Uh, if they uh, go after Don McGahn, the fact mm -hmm. that he sat with Mueller for 30 hours, based on the, the, the Mueller report, ha have they already surrendered that executive privilege in that case or not? No, they surrendered executive privilege within the executive branch, but that's not transferable to the legislative branch. Uh, that wasn't irrevocable. They can just say, look, we're going to cooperate with the special counsel, and that should be evidence enough. I mean, the guy spent 30 hours. And by the way, Donald Trump does not get enough credit for being open, transparent, uh, you know, waiving privilege for his personal counsel, waiving pr executive privilege. He did all that. Why should he have to do that with Congress, having gone through that with the special prosecutor that the Democrats lined up and supported and said, we will believe Mr. Mueller. Uh, but you don't have to waive that privilege again for the Congress. That's ridiculous. Um, my guess is they don't give in to this easily. How do you believe then it plays no. out? Do you, do you go to court? Is it decided in three months or six months or a year from now, Jason? 
Well, look, we tried to get after Eric Holder because we think they inappropriately claimed executive privilege on the Fast and Furious documents. That was a decade ago. It's still in the courts. They still don't have the documents on Fast and Furious. So if they get entangled in this legal brawl, they're going to be in the courts probably through the next administration and the next one after that. Well, yeah. it, it's like a prize fight. They're going to yeah. lock each other up, get in that corner, and next thing we you know, it'll be 2021. I, I didn't mean to interrupt you there, but if you think about the strategy on behalf of the White House, and they're, they're, they're going to buy time, right? And that's, that, that appears to be the, the political calculus. Yes, and, and the problem for the Democrats is they reached far too, they, they have this desperate power grab in place. They reached for everything. They sent out, you know, hundreds of requests instead of being very focused, and they overreached. And now they're trying to get Don McGahn, general counsel to the president, name a time when that's ever happened before Congress. It doesn't happen because there's precedent that says there is executive privilege. And, and when the Democrats overreach like that, now they want the narrative, oh, they're trying to hide something. No, they overreached and they, they tried to ask for too much and they're consequently not going to get any. Very good on this topic. Come on back soon. Look forward to talking to you and seeing you in New York. Jason Chaffetz, thank you Thanks, for your Bill. time today. You bet.